In the beginning, when we started playing, we never figured that we were gonna make records or anything like that. We were playing music for free beers and girls' phone numbers. Bud lived up in Nevada with his mom and wasn't doing too good in school, so he moved down to dad right across the alley from me. As we're moving in, this kid rides up on his bike. He's like, oh, you're the new kid, huh? Hey, my name's Eric. And I'm just friends right off the bat. Within a couple of days of living there, I kept on hearing these drums coming from the garage behind the alley in our house. It's like, does your dad play drums? And he's like, oh yeah. And he teaches kids how to play. And I was like, dad, 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 I gotta get lessons from Bill. When I started going to school with Eric and those guys, all the homies took me in from that whole sublime clip. I was striving to be a tattoo artist, and I was working at a shop as an apprentice. Eric would say, oh, I'll wait till you get good. And I was just like, oh, man, really? When Brad and I met, Eric told me, he was like, you got to really meet this guy, man. He's got a golden voice and plays guitar like a mother. And I was like, dude, you got to jam with this guy, Brad, you know, vice versa. So Bud said we could go to his mom's house because she let practice it in his garage. <laughs> we jammed in his garage for that whole week of spring break. Brad had already written a couple of songs over there in college. He worked out like four or five other songs and it was just like, man, this is it. This really clicked. This is like the best music that we've ever played together. We started playing music with Brad. It wasn't so much all just punk and just that uh, angst. It was odd at first because neither Eric nor myself were really into reggae, ska. Trying to make something like punk fit into a ska song, which no one else was doing then. This was all brand new to us and coming from a rock and roll background, it was, you know, like swimming upstream there. Date Rape was a song that Brad started writing. It was some things that were happened, and it was a big deal. On the news, the media at that time, there was a lot of date rape talk. <laughs> We needed like a, a segue, kind of, we needed like an intro, da, 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 da. And it was one of the first songs that we learned after meeting Brad. I had never heard ska. Like, it's a ska beat, it's like upbeat reggae. Tell you about a girl I know, had a drink about an hour ago. Sitting in the corner by herself, in a bar in downtown hell. Yeah, and I was like, these lyrics are great, man. You know, this is just telling a story. It's like I just watched a little short film, you know. Because of date rape, that's how we got on the air. This DJ that had a ska show once a week, and that's a ska song. He brought the um, CD down to K Rock and they put it on rotation. I was 18 when I designed the original Sublime 40 Ounce Sun. I used to airbrush t shirts. It was like a sun with like part of the flames on top and it had like just some images inside of it. And like finishing up the shirt, Brad goes, what are you gonna do with that? And I was like, I'm gonna sell it. And he's like, how much? And I was like, 20 bucks. It's like, Whoosh. they were working out some recording deal. They were like, we need a, a design. So that's when the, the 40 ounce sun was created, 150 bucks. A bunch of smaller images to make a larger image. If you analyzed it, this is a sperm and this is an ovum. So these are all sperms. I had a buck knife, the mushroom, wishing there's like a genie coming out of a lamp, the devil, you know, death, and obviously the little fishbone thing, and then there's like a little flower growing. I, it's like a bucket list. People want to come and get the sun tattoo from all over, Japan, New York, 
Europe, London. An estimate of Sublime Sun tattoos, 600, I would imagine. You know the Rolling Stone lips? That used to be like a hip tattoo. I was like thinking if I've surpassed that. They called it like an eclectic album, so I'm glad to be a part of that. Today, people are still saying, Brad's still there. He hasn't left. Brad, he was intrigued with human nature. You know, he loved people. We would go and play a show. He would sit on the end of the stage after we were done, you know, talking to, to people. He wanted to know what made people click. There wasn't enough life in the world for him. He was always searching for more. He was a lover. He was a lover. He was a lover.